Great Talk TV. Today we are joined by Adphonic and Wes Biggs, CTO and co-founder. Welcome Wes. Thank you. Um, so before we get into some of the, Wes is here today actually as a CTO to really go, go into the technical detail of some of the back end of uh, Adphonic, but before we get into that, um, building a mobile ad tech platform must, uh, from a technical perspective, must differ from a desktop type business, right? I mean, what, what were some of the core differences you think you've you've come across along the way? I, th I think basically if you look at the, the inventory on mobile versus desktop, you start to see immediately some key differences. So the biggest one is obviously the app world. Yep. And, and we see up to 85% of our traffic coming through apps today. So we've got to really focus on that. Um, You've talked on, on this series before about the cookie problem on mobile, and yep. that's another aspect uh, of cookies not working uh, in the same way or not working in terms of third-party uh, cookie serving you know, on iOS. And, and, so and that, that makes you kind of have to engineer a solution that's very different to if you're a, a desktop business strapping on mobile. As it yeah, you can't, you can't just sort of translate what's been done yep. in, 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 the, uh, in the desktop DSP arena and make that work for a mobile. DSP, you've got to kind of approach it from a different point of view. Okay. I think if you look as well at things like, uh, and people talk a lot about location being a, a new thing in mobile. It's not really that different. What, what is different is probably when you talk about GPS, yep. but again, there you've got, um, you know, that's going to only be in apps that really have that enabled. So it's, it's a bit oversold, I think, when you start talking about mobile, and, and the, okay, well, the similarities are probably okay. more than the, the differences there. Okay. And um, so going into that then, you know, what do you feel are some of the data sets that you, you're bringing to mobile that are quite unique to mobile versus desktop? I think when you, when you talk about retargeting and some of that on mobile, um, the approach is going to have to be quite different because you're not, again, in this cookie environment. So yep. you're talking about um, using data like, uh, in particular, app install data. So you might, as a, a brand, have um, have a, a, a list of customers who have installed your app, or yep. or, or, or have, have expressed interest in other apps, and you want to retarget them using their device identifiers or using a different approach that okay. way. I think um, that's where it gets very interesting to start to bring those segments in. Also, working with uh, iPhones, working with a number of mobile operators, and that's an incredibly useful set of data that uh, they have access to, um, which you wouldn't find an equivalent on. Uh, in yeah, and there that must be you know, companies like Weave that are now emerging that are going to have a lot of deep, uh, not good, not mean to PII necessarily, but a lot of deep personal amount of data that can be obviously anonymized, but mm -hmm. incredibly uh, granular at a user level. It's, it's the granularity of it yeah. and, and the accuracy of that, which yeah. is really exciting for the space because it means, um, you know, I think the only thing equivalent would be like Facebook uh, yeah, yeah. In, in the online world, given the, the granular data they have on users there. So, okay. um, so as that comes into play, uh, I think we're talking about you know, a real audience buying opportunity on mobile, and that's what we're trying to power with Edphonic. Okay. So um, would you like to know, whiteboard for us, kind of the technical architecture of the platform, like the back end necessarily, mainly, and um, I guess touching upon some of the NoSQL database that you've developed and how that's kind of, or the one that you're leveraging through Aerospike, I believe, and how, how does that kind of drive some of the, the real-time decision that you've built into the platform? Is that Sure, cool? yeah. I, I think um, maybe start off by saying, you know, the, the types of technology we use are, have to be a mix. We, we've got to use the right technology in the right situation. Yep. So that's going to be a mix of, you know, we call it SQL, which are traditional, Databases, yep. um, NoSQL, which is uh, I, I think a term that is probably a bit overused and, and a bit vague, it's kind of like big data as well. What, what's big data? Well, it's data and there's a lot of it. Uh, yep. <laughs> everyone's sort of working in that if you're in ad tech at all. Yep. Um, but uh, but NoSQL is really defined at the moment almost as being anything that's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> SQL and, and not still SQL. stores data. Yep. Um, we, we've got some particular types of, of technology that we use in that arena, and you mentioned one that I'll get into. But, but, uh, how, how, is, how are the use cases of SQL and NoSQL for your platform different, though? Like, what, what do you, I guess, do you use 
NoSQL more for and versus SQL? I think um, it's it's a NoSQL, uh, at least in, in the technologies that we use, we use what's called a key value store as yep. part of our ad server environment. And uh, the reason for that is it's very highly reliable, um, you know, 100% uptime system, um, data coming in and out, and uh, very, very fast response time. Yep. So, you know, when we're plugging into exchanges that are expecting 50 millisecond response times, we can't afford to be um, messing about and putting any kind of overhead on that. And, and actually, the interesting thing is these solutions are often converging. Um, yeah. and we do a lot of work with, uh, with Oracle and the, the MySQL database. Right. Um, and you know, they, they've got a number of approaches to, uh, they've got a, a cluster product, which is a bit more like a NoSQL product yeah. that we make a lot of use of. Um, I mean, they've got APIs mean, where you can avoid actually using SQL, the structured query language aspect of it, but still access the, the core database. I mean, you could probably spend another session completely just talking about how the enterprise, <laughs> big enterprises are trying to move into like more of the newer, more modern so, so I think, you know, I, I wouldn't paint us into a corner of this technology is SQL, this technology is no SQL. Yep. Um, it's, it's kind of courses for courses, really. It's, okay. it's about picking the right thing. And then the other one I'd want to throw up as kind of the other key component of how we do the real-time stuff effectively is um, is message queues. So um, I call it asynchronous messaging. And that, that's, a, that's a key bit of glue in any of these systems that actually doesn't get a lot of uh, airplay. <laughs> some of these things. So yeah, it's, it's great to have data sitting out there yep. in, in our environment. I'll, I'll kind of map out where that all sits, okay. uh, but we've got to move it around as well. Right. And, and that's, uh, that can be done in a, a number of different ways. Okay. So messaging is a, is a part of the process in terms of getting uh, event data from our ad servers and our bidders yep. back into our, our core uh, reporting and analytics hub. Right. Okay, makes sense. So, um, so yeah, I, that's probably the best way to draw it out then. Uh, if I s start by sort of saying we've got a, uh, we call it our, our hub, which is our, again, our, our core environment where all of the reporting analytics um, and, and actually all the, the campaign management tools, the workflow, yep. all that sits. Uh, and that's, that's where, you know, we can talk big numbers of terabytes of, you know, 100 terabytes of data sitting around and yep. being collected and churned and analyzed and uh, optimized and all the rest. Um, that's all great, but then we've actually got to go serve some ads at some point. So, <laughs> um, and, and serving ads in the exchange world means, uh, again, with the, the latency requirements that you face on an exchange, um, we need to be located physically uh, near as close, the, as, 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 close as we can. So. This starts to look like a, uh, a hub and spoke topology where in, in various areas of the world, and I'll just draw three on here, we've got these uh, bidders, bidder environments. When you say place of the world, you mean physicality of where they, in terms of data centers and so Exactly, yeah. So, um, we can't dictate to, say, Google where they should put their <laughs> ADEX exchange. Um, but, yeah, but you have and, to and we can't dictate to Mopo that they should put theirs in the same place as Google. So we've, we've, got, to, uh, we've got to make sure that we have multiple locations. So for example, we've got a, a West Coast US location, an East Coast US location, a yep. European location, and so forth. Okay. Yep. So that, that already drives um, some challenges, right? So we can't have everything in one big uh, location. Yep. Um, and so we can't simply have the databases here and you make an ad request here and expect to query that database in anything. So you have to, fr you have to fragment it and out, I guess. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so what happens is, uh, again, we've got core data set here. Um, think of it generically from that point of view. And that's going to be things like all the campaign metadata and so forth, uh, as well as everything we use to do the valuation um, and optimization process. 
in terms of deciding when yep. when to place an ad, what to bid for it, all the rest. Yep. Um, in addition to that, we've got user profile data, um, device identifiers, all the uh, all the kind of cookieless identifiers that we use in mobile to um, accurately identify users, do things like frequency capping, do things yeah. like um, advanced targeting, retargeting, and so forth. Uh, that data has all got to be available to each of these in real time in that you know 50 millisecond. So you have window. to, and again, you have to move that as close to these as possible. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and then that's where we start talking about where are the where are the different options for uh, moving that data around. So when we look at what's actually in one of these environments, the better environments, um, we we will have each of those data sets represented. And again, we're going to pick the, the best type of technology for the, the use case for it. Yep. So, uh, so if I start with the campaign metadata piece, so we've got, um, can you still see this here? We've got uh, all the campaign data here, uh, and we're actually going to use <laughs> SQL for that because it's a very you know, well defined, normalized yeah. data set. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go on. But it's just more formulaic in terms of the structure of that data, right? Absolutely. So SQL makes a huge amount of sense for that. Yep. Um, we've got uh, the user data, though, which is less uh, less formulaic. You know, there's there's a lot of variations in that. Uh, and that's going to be one that we choose to use the, the NoSQL cache for. Okay. It's also because this stuff doesn't change that frequently. It, it does, you know, we, we want people to be able to launch a campaign and within minutes have it live in these environments. And, but we can do that using the, the, the SQL diversity, replication technology. The rest of the data that comes into that, I guess, is only going to be bigger or smaller rather than like the, 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 the breadth of the type of data, I guess. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, the user data has, has got to be constantly changing. You, yeah, yeah. you think about frequency capping, you want that, you want to know that, you know, if you're serving an ad three times in a row, uh, you want to be able to count those three times and not come back 10 minutes later and then realize you've done it 10 times in the yeah, okay. 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah, the, again, so this is a, a SQL one. We use that. We use no SQL. We use the, uh, the key value store I talked about, which yep. is the Aerospike yep. uh, database for that user data and the frequency capping data and all that. Um, and then, We've got the uh, the additional problem of saying, okay, now we've we've processed a bid request. Uh, we're using both of these data sets to uh, in, do our real time decisioning against that. So, what are the what are the campaigns and creatives that are available and eligible to be served yep. given all the target <laughs> parameters there? Some some standard filtering. Standard filtering, um, and then you know what do we know about the the user? In terms of frequency capping, in terms of retargeting, in terms of propensity to click, all of these uh, propensity models that we put in place uh, as part of the evaluation process. And uh, we do that, and finally, hopefully, we serve an ad uh, or win a bid yeah. and, and make that happen. Uh, we need to then record the fact that that's happened so we can feed it back into the hub yeah. and feed it into our ongoing valuation optimization. Uh, algorithms which need to be crunching things not only from this bidder but from this bidder, from this bidder, from every, every geographical location that we've got. And, uh, and the, I guess the, the, the system you have in place at the moment to, to do this, is it kind of adaptable or, or scalable enough for you to then when you move into a, the APAC market for instance so you can just set up another like, spoke I guess? Yeah exactly, so this is, this is a very well defined um, you know, set of, of uh, interconnected servers that we can roll up uh, and, and roll out very quickly for a new environment. So, you know, an exchange comes to us and, and wants to get up and going. Um, gr provided they are open RTB compliant, for example, yep. um, we can do that literally, uh, you know, in hours in, in one of these environments. Or if we need to actually provision some new servers somewhere, then as quickly as that can be you know, physically uh, configured. So. Okay, great. I mean, Love to have you back on again in a few weeks, and perhaps, <laughs> and then go into some more of the specifics around what sits in the databases and some of the data sets you are bringing into the platform. But 
I mean, this is this is a great uh, this is a great overview of how you've kind of configured that. So thanks for taking us through that. Yeah, thank and you. Uh, so thank you for tuning in to this week's Trade Talk TV.